I returned to Ethiopia four years ago after spending my entire adult life in the United States and some part of it in Europe. And I'm here by choice. I'm very proud to be Ethiopian and I can't imagine living anywhere else, actually. Um, the main purpose for my coming back to Ethiopia is that I feel very fortunate to have learned so much from formal education and also from living and working abroad. And I've always had the desire to share this blessing with my fellow Ethiopians. And I've had that opportunity and I'm very grateful for it. What I'm about to share with you is not based on any scientific research. It's all from simple observations. And as a civil engineer, my observations are focused on construction. Um, now, Ethiopia certainly is very, very much a, a growing country, one of the fastest growing economies in the world, and a lot is going on in relation to construction. Now, as civil engineers, we care very much about a number of things regarding what we build. First of all, function. What we build must be functional. We also care about safety. We care about the aesthetics of what we built. We also care about how livable these structures are and how sustainable they are. These are all important considerations in what we build. Now, when we look around, the question we can ask is, are we building the way we used to be able to? Are we also building consistent with what we were taught? And I believe the answer to these questions is no. There is much left to be desired in what we are constructing today. So the question now is, well, what is missing? Uh, why aren't we constructing uh, in the manner that we should, in the manner that uh, we were taught, in the manner that we actually used to be able to? And the answer I come to is much has to do with the way we look at things, with the way we think. And that is described by one word, and that's mindset. Our attitude, uh, the way we choose to look at things. That has great influence in what we do. Now, the definition of mindset, as you can see here, is a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines one's behavior, outlook, and mental attitude. It's a lot that is packed into this one simple word. Now, let me point out a few things, a few issues, let's say, that are related to construction that are affected by our mindset. One that comes to the top of the list is our work ethic. Work ethic is poor. This picture illustrates the point I'm trying to make. Notice where the patches are on the trousers. Why should anybody's trousers wear out at the seat? <laughs> Here's a criterion for you for how you may want to select a daily laborer that you may want to hire. But when I go around construction sites, what I see very frequently, actually, is that these trousers are worn out at the seat. Not a good sign. <laughs> now, there's also lack of respect for time. Uh, it bothers me when people say, well, it's cultural. I don't believe it's cultural at all. I think it's more like a bad habit. We do not have respect for time. Construction projects are notoriously delayed delayed by years sometimes. Well, why should that be? Because when construction projects are delayed, cost goes up. Also, we're deprived of the use of these facilities that if we had them on time, we can actually use them. So time is a problem. Another one is what I call the we will fix it syndrome, as opposed to doing it right the first time. Let me illustrate the point. You can see these sets of stairs. 
You don't have to be an engineer to realize that this thing is not constructed very well. The concrete looks terrible. There is no alignment. And if you were to talk with the people who built this, they will probably say, do not worry, we will fix it. <laughs> this is very, very common. In fact, we, we, we build with this idea that it doesn't matter if it's not okay because we're going to fix it. And the way this is going to be fixed is by patching it up. And it will get patched up and may even look reasonably good, but what we cannot forget is that a patched up structure is never as good as one that was constructed correctly to begin with. Now, this brings me to the next point, and this one is the it doesn't matter syndrome, or in Amharic, as it was mentioned earlier, chigrelem. <laughs> we live in a world where there are no problems in construction, and let me show you what I mean. This, these are a set of stairs at a, a fancy hotel uh, that actually charges up to 1,000 bur per day uh, outside of Addis Ababa. And I stayed there once, and when I walked up the stairs to go to my room, as soon as I got to the fourth level, I stumbled. I thought, well, okay, I, maybe I was tired, and went to my room. And then later on, after lunch, when I went back up the same set of stairs, I stumbled again at the fourth level. And then I said, wait a minute, something is wrong here. So I walked back down, I started to look at these stairs, and maybe this will illustrate the point a little better for you. I started measuring them. The first three are approximately 150 millimeters, the riser. The fourth one is 200. Note that our brain thinks that these stairs are of equal height. That's what we assume. So the first three steps programmed my brain to thinking that these stairs are about 150 millimeters high, sent the message to my legs to lift them up about that much, <laughs> except when I got to the fourth level, it just wasn't good enough. So I stumbled. While I was doing this, there was a guard standing by the front entrance of this hotel, and he came and talked with me, and uh, I explained to him what I was doing. And he said, you know what? Every single person who walks up these stairs stumbles. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's another syndrome in construction that we call, we will clean it. We will clean it, not to worry. Well, here's an example for you. I went to visit this one building under construction. A gentleman was painting it, the walls, and I said, well, you know, why don't you put something on the floor so that the paint doesn't get on the floor? He said, no, don't worry, we'll clean it. Well, the problem with this attitude is cleaning it is extra work that <coughs> takes extra time and extra expense. Even worse than that, though, is the paint doesn't get cleaned until it's nice and hard. It's a few days later. Now, trying to remove paint that's already hard is difficult. Either the work doesn't get done very well, or what's likely to happen is they damage the floor in the process of removing the paint. So take a look at what we're doing now. We're spending more time, we're spending more money to get inferior result. That's what's going on. Now, the next one is the I didn't see it syndrome. Look at that light switch. This light switch, as you can see, has some paint on it, because whoever painted the walls where this light switch is located also got some of the paint on the light switch. Now, I am very serious when I say this. If you talk to the person who painted this, that person would say, I didn't see it. Now, I used to get irritated about this, and I also really thought this was very disingenuous. I didn't think people really meant it. So I talked with this contractor friend of mine who's been in construction for a number of years in Ethiopia, and I said, well, why do these things happen? He said, they don't see it. I said, what do you mean they don't see it? Well, they don't see it. 
Well, perhaps it's because the, 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 the point of reference is not there, because when I went into this building, in fact, this is a building I live in, across the street from where I took this picture, the light switch looks like this. Now, if we were to compare it, I suppose then we could see that there is something different about the light switch on the left. So I was curious about this, uh, you know, uh, I didn't see it thing, so I decided to do an experiment. And I did this experiment at my apartment. I'm going to use this to illustrate the point. There is a woman who comes to clean my apartment once a week. Very nice woman, very hardworking, very genuine. Every time she cleaned my apartment, my pictures are all crooked. And every time I straighten them out myself. One day I decided, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe what I should do is use this as a little experiment to see if, in fact, this I didn't see it thing is real. So when she came back, I left the pictures as she left them. When she came back a week later, I asked her if she could stand next to me and look at the wall where the pictures were hanging. And I said, what do you see on this wall? She said, well, I see pictures. I said, good. What else do you see? She said, well, I see buildings in the pictures. I said, that's correct. Uh, what else? I see trees. I see water. We went through all this. And finally, she said to me, well, uh, that's all I see. Then I said to her, well, I see those same things. But in addition, I also see that these pictures are crooked. And she looked at me and she said, you know what? Now that you mentioned it, you're right. They are crooked. But I didn't see them, <laughs> is what she said. Now, I did other experiments. However, I don't think we have enough time to go through them. So I'm going to just move on. Back into construction, and what we have now is the we will organize it syndrome, which can be illustrated by this picture, because most construction sites are a mess. Uh, the, the steel, the wood, the plastic, the tubes, uh, they're all mixed together. If you move to an interior space, it may look something like this, where it would be very difficult to separate the scrap from the usable material. And what this means really is it increases waste. Uh, it also reduces the quality of the materials that are actually used in construction. They get scratched up, banged up, and then, of course, we end up using them. So what we have then is inferior uh, quality of construction. So I see all this, and if you say to people, well, why is it like this? They say, well, don't, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll organize it. But it never gets organized. It, it just stays like this. And what is worse, actually, is a messy <coughs> construction site is starting to become normal. In fact, for it to look like a construction site, it should be a bit messy, isn't it? Then I started to ask myself, well, what are we teaching our engineers? How, how is this going this way? Because every construction site, there's a civil engineer, there's an architect, and so on. So I am absolutely convinced that we do not have lack of education. People have basic education to construct what we are constructing. Why is it the way it is? I wonder if it has to do with what we teach and what they leave the university with. So I started to now compare the classroom to the construction site. When I look at our classrooms, uh, this is what they look like. Now, by the way, uh, because I wanted to be kind to you, I did not choose the worst pictures. I, these are moderately good pictures. But nevertheless, they are dirty. The students are used to throwing everything on the floor, which surprises me. Now, when I look at the desks, the desks are very often so disorganized that you don't even know where the aisle is. So this is what we have in the classroom where we teach, and the students feel entirely comfortable going to the classroom, sitting down to start class, even though it's dirty and it's messy and it's just disorganized. And what I want is 
for them to feel uncomfortable, actually, if they were sitting in a classroom like this, uh, as if like something is wrong. But most of the time, they just don't feel that way. So I really thought that maybe what is going on at the construction site has to do with what they are used to in the classroom. Because if these desks are disorganized like this, how is one going to see when there is misalignment with the stairs I showed you, for example, at a construction site. So I started to think about this and said, well, what can I do? And this is by way of offering solutions. What we do is, number one, in the classes I teach, nobody is allowed to come late. I start and end class exactly on time. The other thing is, we always start class by cleaning. I'm the first to start the cleaning, by the way. They all jump in. In less than two or three minutes, the class is clean. The desks are organized. They are in line. And what I try to say to my students is, their eyes need to start to get used to this idea of organized space. Because otherwise, at the construction site, they can't have an organized construction site. So, the other thing is this idea of excuses. I know it's rampant, giving excuse for things that didn't go right. As opposed to making it right, we say why it's not right. So, what I say to my students is, if you ever give excuse, it has to be excused from the standpoint of taking responsibility. An example of that is if a student is late, to say that I did not give it enough time to get to class, knowing the traffic situation, the taxi situation, and so on, is acceptable. But to say I couldn't find a taxi is not an acceptable situation. So the bottom line is teaching responsibility. Responsibility for what we do, and also responsibility for what we construct doing what we were taught to do without the chiggery alam, doesn't matter, I didn't see it, and all that. And this, I hope, puts back that missing piece so that we can work to the best of our ability and serve the communities we live in. Thank you. <laughs>